Hello and welcome back to World 360. On 21st September 2021, in our very first episode of the show, we spoke about the lesser known Sthans in Central Asia, which are Afghanistan's immediate neighbors. Today, we return to Central Asia to talk about the largest country in this region, a country most of you would probably know about through the infamous character Borat, played by comedian Sasha Baron Cohen. That's right, it's Kazakhstan we're talking about today, which borders Russia, China, the other Stans in the region, as well as the Caspian Sea. Like most of the countries in Central Asia, Kazakhstan has long been ruled by an authoritarian regime. But on Wednesday, the government resigned as protests raged in the country. Keep in mind that public protests are deemed illegal in this nation. President Kasim Yomat Tokayev accepted the resignation of the Kazakh government and later declared a nationwide state of emergency. On 5th January, Tokayev issued a statement appealing to protesters and young people not to, quote-unquote, ruin their life path and lives of their loved ones. So why are people taking to the streets? Shortly after 1st January, the Kazakh government lifted subsidy caps on liquefied petroleum gas, also known as LPG, a low-carbon fuel that a majority of Kazakhs use to power their cars. Since January 2019, the government has been trying to transition to electronic trading for LPG, and that meant ending the subsidizing of prices for consumers to allow the market to dictate prices instead. However, lifting of these caps sent fuel prices soaring. In regions like Kazakhstan's western Manjistau, where about 70 to 90 percent of people rely on LPG, there was an immediate pushback from the public as prices more than doubled. This is quite ironic given Kazakhstan, especially its western region, is rich in oil and gas and attracts hundreds of billions of dollars of foreign investment in its oil and metals industries every year. But last Sunday, protests officially began in Zanao Zen and have now spread across the country, especially in oil-producing areas and large commercial hubs like Almaty, where the president's residence is located. The situation has become so chaotic that attacks on banks have been reported, as well as shops, restaurants, even public buildings have been torched. More than 200 people have been detained and nearly 100 police officers have been wounded in clashes with protesters. Police even used tear gas and flashbang grenades on demonstrators. The president later declared an emergency in Almaty and Manjistau, blaming the violence on what he termed domestic and foreign terrorists. He even appealed to a Russia-led military alliance to help to contain the unrest, to which Russia has agreed. Kazakhstan's central bank also suspended operations, and there have even been internet blackouts in the country. Now, what does this mean for Kazakhstan's leadership? If we look at the history of this country, it's a fairly young independent state and a former Soviet Republic. For 30 years, it was ruled by strongman Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, who stepped down in 2019. Now, Nur Sultan is an old communist leader who served as first secretary of the Communist Party of the Kazakh SSR in 1989 and was Kazakhstan's first president. In 2019, a long-standing colleague of his, Kasim Yomat Tokayev, took over as the president. But Nur Sultan retains substantial influence in the country's political system. In fact, during some of the recent protests, there were even calls for the 81-year-old leader to give up his reign of power. These protests are surely the biggest threat so far to the regime Nur Sultan established during the foundations of the country and the leadership is clearly rattled. Tokayev has since dismissed the country's prime minister and appointed the country's first deputy prime minister, Ali Khan Smailov, as acting prime minister. He also announced that he will be replacing Nur Sultan as the leader of the country's security council, 
which is a powerful constitutional advisory body to the Kazakh government. Tokayev also dismissed Nur Sultan's nephew, Samat Abish, from the position of first deputy head of the country's National Security Service. After declaring a nationwide emergency, Tokayev assured Kazakhs that authorities would soon bring down LPG prices and also urged the acting cabinet ministers to extend price control to gasoline, diesel and other goods. Let's also remember what this means for the larger Central Asian region. There are ethnic Kazakhs in Afghanistan who have been trying to return home ever since the Taliban take over and are now faced with a whole new problem, a deteriorating law and order situation in their homeland too. Kazakhstan's neighbours, including China, are also probably watching the situation in Kazakhstan very closely, given protests of this scale haven't erupted since the 1980s. And with Kazakhstan being a critical energy transit country for other countries in Central Asia, the developments are being minutely monitored. Thank you so much for watching. This is Pia Krishankuti for The Print. Do subscribe to The Print.in and follow us on social media.